Every region of the world has its own beauty standards that make people look beautiful. In other words, people who adopt those beauty standards are perceived as beautiful and handsome by the people of that region. However, if those same people go to another part of the world, they might seem unbelievable. That's when we come to know about the beauty standards in Africa that are on another level. Since it's a land of diverse tribes, people, cultures, customs, and traditions, we see people transforming, shaping, and marking their bodies and skin to appear beautiful. But what do we mean by that? Well, from scarification to putting a large plate on lips, wearing long neck rings, lip tattoos, ear stretching, and having bulky bellies and hips, some of the most unbelievable beauty standards exist in Africa. They are just the same as females, who prefer to be thin in Western countries, while men want muscular bodies. Welcome to a new episode of Black Africa Diary, a channel where we talk about Black African history, culture, arts, and civilization. It's a place where you will see the real picture of Black Africa, its stories, and the events defining it. In this episode, we will tell you about the mind-blowing beauty standards that only exist in Africa. Let's get started. Number one, buttered hairstyles. In contrast to the common use of hair gel or spray to achieve specific looks, the Afar tribe from Ethiopia's Afar region, northern Djibouti, and southern Eritrea uses an unusual thing, butter. The Afar people, who don't rely on conventional hair products, particularly favor butter for their Afro hairstyles. The two main styles, known as Asago and Data, depend on the type of curls desired. Asago presents an Afro hairstyle with an ashy coloring attributed to the butter, while the curls of the Data hairstyle are crafted using sticks and butter. This unconventional hair care method not only protects their hair from the sun, but also keeps the curls looking flawless for an extended period. It's worth noting that while men and women use butter as a hair product, the act of family members spitting on a girl's butter-covered head serves as a unique form of blessing within their cultural practices. While this trend might not find widespread acceptance elsewhere, it showcases alternative options in the absence of traditional styling products like wax or gel. Number two, scarification. Scarification is literally giving scars to the skin to etch pictures, designs, and words using techniques such as scratching, cutting, etching, and burning. While not a widespread form of body art, it holds profound cultural significance in many African societies where scarification marks serve as identifiers for one's family, clan, tribe, and social standing. This scarification makes men and women look sublime, having a unique power in them. In various West African tribes, scarification becomes a ceremonial practice to celebrate significant life events like puberty and marriage, embodying notions of beauty and strength. Non-participation in scarification rituals may lead to exclusion from communal activities. The types and rationales behind scarification vary among African tribes, and its prevalence across the continent is attributed to scars being more visible on dark skin than tattoos. Specific patterns may denote tribal or ethnic affiliations, and some communities believe that particular scarifications possess healing properties. That's why, in some cases, people from the outer world are said to visit these tribes and get their bodies scared. Number three, lip plates. Lip plates, also called mouth plates or lip plugs, are sizable circular wooden or clay discs inserted into pierced holes in the upper or lower lip. This unique cultural tradition is common in Africa and parts of South America. In specific African nations, individuals may extract teeth to adjust a lower lip plate. With time, the size of the lip plate is increased, which in turn stretches the hold area of the lips. Among Chad's Lobi and Sarah groups, it's not uncommon for individuals to wear both upper and lower lip plates. In Ethiopia's lower Omo River Valley, young women have their lips pierced in preparation for marriage, typically between the ages of 15 and 18. The dimensions of the lip plate often signify pride and beauty, with larger plates requiring greater payments from potential grooms to the bride's father. Number four, red ochre. Red ochre is a natural clay earth pigment with a history spanning millennia. It was once used in cave paintings and held symbolic importance in ancient Egypt, representing life and victory. In contemporary times, red ochre is associated with the semi-nomadic Herero tribe in the arid northwest region of Namibia, known as the Himba. Women from this tribe cover themselves entirely in red ochre, a mixture of the pigment, fat, and butter called oaz, sometimes infused with aromatic resin for a pleasant scent. 
Applied daily to their skin and hair, the paste serves various purposes, including protection from the sun while tending to livestock or defense against insects. However, the Himba people maintain that the primary motivation is aesthetic, like applying makeup each morning. To create the paste, they crush the ochre stone, hematite, into tiny pieces, mix it with butter, and heat the concoction before applying. Girls typically start wearing red ochre when they are old enough to manage their personal hygiene. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on Black Africa. Let's continue now. Number five, neck rings. The exact origins of neck rings remain uncertain, but a few theories have circulated. Some propose that they were worn in Southeast Asia to protect against tiger attacks, while others suggest they were used on women to diminish their beauty, making them less likely to be kidnapped by men. However, with time, neck rings have become a part of maintaining beauty and showing status. For instance, the Ndebele people in South Africa wear neck rings to elongate their necks, considering it a beauty practice and a symbol of faithfulness. Similar to how people wear rings on their fingers, some Ndebele women wear these rings around their necks and are not supposed to remove them until marriage. Number six, Berber tattoos. In Morocco, particularly among the Berber people, facial tattoos are a common and accepted practice rooted in tradition. These tattoos serve as a narrative recounting significant moments in the lives of both men and women. Decades ago, Berber tattoo parlors functioned much like beauty salons, where women desired tattoos for aesthetic reasons. However, the process was far from painless, as Berber tattoos were considered more painful than most. The chosen design would be stitched onto the skin with a needle, and black charcoal would be applied through the openings and wounds. After about a week, the scab would be removed, revealing the final tattoo. The symbols used in these tattoos were often inspired by nature and held various meanings, such as protection from envy, fertility, stress relief, strength, and healing. Berber tattoos also played a role in determining a woman's marital status or readiness for marriage, while men typically opted for smaller and more discreet tattoos. Number seven, Karo body painting. The Karo tribe, a small group of 1,000 to 3,000 people residing along the Omo River in South Ethiopia, is distinctive not only for its size within the Nilotic ethnic group, but also for being among the last tribes practicing body painting traditions. Each day, the tribe engages in the ritual of painting their bodies and faces using colored ochre, white chalk, yellow mineral rock ash, animal fat, and water. The designs vary from simple lines and shapes to more intricate depictions like animals, with handprints commonly covering the legs and torso. This daily body painting tradition, persisting for over 500 years, serves dual purposes, enhancing beauty by making individuals appear more attractive and instilling courage for battle. Despite their occasionally intimidating appearance, the Karo tribe is generally known for their friendliness and often welcomes visitors. Number eight, ear stretching. The practice of ear stretching, commonly associated with individuals flaunting elongated earlobes, might appear as a new trend. However, its roots are deeply embedded in the traditions of African tribes. For many tribes, the combination of ear piercing and subsequent stretching symbolizes a pivotal step into adulthood, embodying beauty and cultural significance. An illustration of this tradition is found among the Maasai people of Kenya, who historically used sharp objects like thorns or knife points for ear piercing. This was followed by adorning their ears with substantial jewelry to expand the earlobe holes gradually. While both men and women participate in this practice, it tends to be more prevalent among women. The Fani people of West Africa also embrace ear stretching, primarily practiced by women to accommodate large hoops and gold domes. Number nine, bulky bellies and wide hips. In some Nigerian cultures, particularly among the Yoruba and Igbo people, the concept of beauty involves admiring men with bulky bellies and women with broad hips. This tendency towards a more robust and curvier physique stands in contrast to Western ideals that often lean towards slimmer or more athletically toned body types. Within certain African tribes, a fuller belly is regarded as a symbol of wealth, prosperity, and fertility. Women characterized by fuller figures, showcasing well-rounded hips and a substantial belly, are frequently perceived as more alluring and attractive. This perspective is deeply embedded in cultural beliefs associating a generous body size with good health the capacity to bear children and overall well-being. 
The emphasis on a more substantial physique extends beyond women. Even among men, a broader and sturdier build is frequently linked to attributes such as strength, resilience, and the capability to provide for a family. Isn't it true that everyone should appreciate and respect these beauty standards? What do you think about which of these beauty standards is appealing and should be adopted by other regions of the world? Let us know your thoughts on whether you have met people adopting any of these beauty standards. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We bring videos on Black Africa, its history, rich arts and culture, and things the world should know about. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.